Remember, this is a, um, a new kind of machine, although we don't usually think of it like a machine, but it is the same sort of thing in which you, uh, you specify a regular expression. And it is a way of like either accepting or rejecting strings. Although the terminology, we don't usually say accept or reject. We say matches or does not match. So for example, um, a, b plus a, b. What does this match? This is a regular expression. The way to read this is those a's and b's, the letters represent the letters a's and b's. The plus means or. And the parentheses is sort of a grouping. So what this is, is what you see inside the parentheses, it could be either A, B, or A. But in either case, it's followed by B. So this matches um, A, B, B, or A, B, right? In the plus there, if you take the first part if you, of this, this alternative here, if you take the A, B, then it has to be A, B followed by B, which is A, B, B. Or you could have taken this one, the A followed by B is A, B, all right? Um, there's also the star operation. So if I did something like a b star a b, the star allows repetitions or um, redos of the thing which immediately precedes it. So this one, you've got to start with an a. This star applies only to the thing right uh, next to it, which is the b. You've got to do uh, a single a followed by zero or more b's and then followed by uh, another A and another B at the end. So this matches any string like A, B to the N, A, B, right? And the way we write that is, you know, the language of A, B star, A, B equals this set, A, B to the N, A, B, where N is a natural number, right? And you can make much more complicated types of regular expressions like this. Uh, you know, how about a plus b squared star? Here the parentheses indicate that the star is doing um, zero or more things of this format. And things of this format apparently can either be a or b squared. And so this matches its it's not very convenient to say in words what that matches, but it matches things consisting of A's and B squareds, all right? For example, it does match things like A, B squared, A, 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 B squared, B squared, A, right? That would be matched. The star means, I usually informally say the star represents repetition, although it's not necessarily literally repeating the same thing over and over again. It, it is repeating this pattern over and over again, where in this case, the thing we're repeating is either an A or a B squared, and it can be different from one iteration to the next. All right, any questions? This is a little recap from last time. Okay, um, I said last time regular expressions, and you CS people maybe have heard of these or seen them in the wild. Um, they are extremely useful in certain types of programming, programming which involves uh, string processing. Um, regular expressions are extremely useful. And they actually uh, are so useful, they are almost treated as, as like their own little baby programming language that you use inside of um, other sort of more full-featured programming languages. Um, I want to just sort of demonstrate a little bit of what you can do with regular expressions in the real world. Now the easiest way, so I have a Mac here, the easiest way to play around with regular expressions is there's a command line thing that you can use on a Mac or uh, in Linux called grep. And I'm going to try to get my screen together here so that you can see everything. I got this, I got that. Okay, here's my uh, terminal. So on, um, and I'm gonna try to write, hopefully you can see, I'm not gonna write much while I'm doing this, but. Um, so on, come on, on a Mac or Linux, use grep, or I'm gonna use egrep, which E is for extended. It allows you to do a few extra things that you can't do with grep. Um, grep stands for uh, general 
regular expression print. So it's used to print out the results of matching a regular expression. And the way you use it, um, by the way, there's a Windows, if you, have, if you use the, like the Windows command prompt, you can use, I've actually never done this, but I looked it up. Apparently, this is what you can use. Find stir um, and then slash r for regular expression. Um, and then otherwise, the syntax should be similar. Although I'm using egrep, which has slightly, there are like different flavors of regular expressions with slight differences. So what I'm doing may not work exactly on Windows. But anyway, um, the way you use it is something like I'm going to do uh, grep or egrep is what I'm going to use. And then in quotes, you put your regular expression right there. And then this is followed by a file name, a text file. And the result is going to be, um, it searches through that text file and it prints out every line with a substring that matches the regular expression. All right, I'm gonna try and write that. So this searches the file and then prints every line with a substring matching the regular, the regular expression that you said. All right, and to play around with this, to test it out, I have a file of 100,000 English language words, the most common words in the English language, 100,000 of them. So, um, you know, if I do, uh, it's called words en dot text. Cat is a command line thing in, in Linux and, and on the Mac, which um, just dump, it prints out the contents of the file. So, did you see it go by? This is 100,000 English words, one word per line, and they're all um, lowercase everything, all right? Zizivuz is the last one in my list, okay? Um, so when I do this egrep, for example, I can do something like egrep, and then my pattern, this is called a pattern when you use it in this context, ABB of this. What it's gonna do is search the entire file, prints every line that has a substring matching ABB. So it's gonna print out every English word, which includes ABB. Can you think of an example that you will see in the output? What? Animal? Babble. Oh, babble. Yes. I thought she said animal. Animal is wrong. <laughs> it has ABB in it. I was thinking rabbit. That was the first thing that came to my mind. Anyway, there you go. You get tabby, unabbreviated. There's, there's a lot. There's rab rabble, rabbits, rabbles, rabbiting. I don't know what that means. Rabbiters. Yeah. Rabbis. There's some little suspicious words here, but there's 100,000, so... Um, okay, uh, we can also do something like um, BEP. Can you think of a word that has BEP in it? No. Um, Hebephrenia and, <laughs> all right, so there are words, but, and you know, if there's no match at all, like this, then it just says nothing, okay? This is how you would use grep. But, um, you can also use the regular expression operation. So for example, if I do this, the star means, you know, the star, like we were just talking about. It means repetitions. Uh, so what this is gonna match is any, any word which includes a T followed by several, uh, zero or more O's followed by a TH. So what, can you say a word that will match this? Tooth, tooth. tooth will match this. Um, it has to have a T followed by a certain number of O's followed immediately by TH. Yeah, tooth is what came to my mind. And there's others. Yeah, toothy. Here is uh, watt hour. You will notice, why did this one match? Yeah, because the star matches zero or more occurrences of the O. So T and then zero, O star matched nothing and then TH. So that counts. Um, yeah, and several others, buck tooth. All right, uh, how about um, in egrep, I will write this down also. Um, 
The plus actually means something different from the plus that we, uh, in our notation, we use plus to mean or. In egrep, uh, or is the pipe, the vertical bar. So if I want or, I have to use the bar rather than the plus. So I can do something like a grep of, how about L, B, parentheses, A, pipe, E, R. Can anyone say in words what that will match? I mean, don't give me an example. Just what, what kinds of words will... Yeah, it matches a word which has an L followed by a B, followed by either an A or an E, and then an R. I don't know if you can think of any words like that. There's not. Oh, I forgot my file name. Sorry. There. Like mul uh, toll bars has L B A R, all right? And here's one mulberry has L B E R, all right? So it's matching every word which has either an A or an or a E. I don't know if this seems useful to you in the real world, but at least I hope you would agree if you wanted to write, a, say, a Python code to do that, it would take you more than six characters, or whatever, how long that regular expression is, right? Um, doing this in a general purpose programming language is more complicated not super hard but yeah so you can there are python uh there's ways to use regular expressions directly inside python so yeah i would say if you had to do this in python you should do it like this anyway but um without using regular expressions you have to make some kind of loop that m did very specific checking which is a real pain um let's do some more some more examples egrep has some convenient shortcuts if you want to use this in the real world, there are lots of shortcuts that they put in that we are not typically going to use in our regular expressions, in our theoretical approach. But um, so shortcuts. In grep, the dot, the period, this matches any single character. matches any single character. So I can do something like um, P-E-L dot R. This will match any word which has a P-E-L, then something, then a R. I don't, I don't know what. We got Gospelers and Pelorius. I don't know what that means, but um, those are apparently the only words that have P-E-L, one more letter, and then an R, right? Um, some more uh, cute tricks. Here's another little shortcut that is useful. The caret sign, this matches the um, start of the line. So it doesn't actually match a, a literal character in the string, but it matches the start of each line. So I can do something like start S-T-A. This will give me every word that starts with a S, a T, a A. If you left the caret out, it would be any word which has S-T-A anywhere in it, which is a lot more. So this is all the words which start with S-T-A. And then there's another one for the end of the line. That is this. Backslash R for like return matches the end of the line. All right, and people who really use regular expressions all the time, I have like in, in various times of my life, I have done a few programming jobs where I, I use some hardcore regular expressions, but then I forget. I, I always have to look up these little things. But um, real regular expression masters have all of this memorized. I can do something like caret feet slash r. What will this match? It matches any word which has beginning of the line, feet, then the end of the line. How many words are there? That's just feet, right? Yeah, okay. Um, how about, anyone want to suggest, how could I match any um, word of six letters? There's actually not so hard. I heard somebody say six dots. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's not quite right. We got Zymergy, which has seven. Remember, this is matching any substring 
of six letters. They could be anything, one after another. Yeah, so we got to do, if you wanted to have exactly six letters, you do that. Oops. Right? Start line, six letters, end line. And this will give me all the words which have exactly six letters. Like zoinks, zoids. I like that. All right? Um, okay, I could get all the five letter words like this. Right? Those are all the five letter words. I just did uh, start of the string, five dots, end of the string. Um, Here's where I'm gonna, I'm gonna spoil the Wordle for today. Did, I hope you got my email. I'm gonna spoil uh, at least parts of the Wordle today. You can use regular expressions to sort of solve the Wordle for you, or at least this is all about like narrowing down the possible choices. And I, I, I hope you're familiar with the Wordle. It's a, it's a sort of guessing word game where, here I'll write down, how it works is the word you're trying to guess um, in Wordle, it always has five letters in the word. And you have, you're allowed to make guesses one at a time. And every time you make a guess, it tells you, of the letters that you guessed, it tells you um, if any of them are in the correct position in the word, they're green. And if any of them are, like this letter is in the word, but it's in the wrong spot, it's uh, yellow. And it, if this letter is not in the word at all, it comes up as gray. Does that, I didn't explain that very well. But anyway, um, for example, in today's Wordle, this morning when I woke up, my first guess was stare. All right, I don't use the same word every day. This is a, don't judge me. This, different people have different lifestyles and that's okay. Um, so I began with this word. I like this word just because uh, those are common letters and I wanna see if any of those are actually in the word. Um, and the result today when I did this was, I, I don't, I don't wanna, do colors now, but uh, the R and the E were indicated to be, um, it says those are in the word, but they're in the wrong spot, all right? And so what I know now is this word has an R and an E somewhere. It does not have an S or a T or an A in it, all right? And then you get to make another guess. And you, you get six guesses or else you lose if you, uh, if you don't get it in six guesses, all right? Um, my next, my follow-up to this I wanted to make another word, and also every time you guess, it has to be a real word that you guess. You can't just type random letters. So my follow-up, again, don't judge me. I wanted to see, try to locate where the E and the R end up. So I kept the R and E in there, but in different positions, hopefully figuring out where they go. And the results of this were, this R was still like that, I'll, I'll use two circles. So this one means this is in the right spot. So now I know there's an E right there, there's an R somewhere else, but not in that spot, all right? Um, how, I wanna try and make a regular expression that will match all of the possible words that it might be, all right? And at this point, so a simple version of that is, I know there must be an E in this position, right? Can anyone say what, what uh, expression should I use to get that? Just all words that have an E in this position. Yeah? Yeah, 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 like this, but with an E right there, all right? It means anything, 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 then an E, then something else, right? Great. This is still very, uh, very many words uh, of that form. I would like to narrow it down a little bit. Actually, we do have more information, and that is, we know there's an R somewhere in this word. All right, can we somehow make this also indicate that there is an R? Actually, would you agree the R is in one of those other four positions, right? It's not where the E is. And in fact, we can say a little bit more specifically, it's not here either. Right, because this guest said the R is in the word but not in that position. So what I want is, um, uh, so E in the fourth slot, fourth spot has E, and then I also want um, R in either the first, the third, or the fifth, right? And it actually, the way Wordle works, it is possible that you could have the R more than once which tends to make it harder to figure out. Anyway, any suggestions about that? 
first of all, how would we do it if we just wanted the R in the first position? I think that's, you just put the R in the first position, right? So this will give us all the ones where the R is actually at the beginning. But um, I want where the R could be either the first or the third or the fifth. Any suggestion about that? This is not total, it's not very convenient to write, but you can write it. Yeah? Could you just do three separate like things and then have the or in between? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do this. Check it out. I'm going to be a little smart with my parentheses here. R something something E something or something R. Well, no, it can't be in the second position. Something something R E something or bu, 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 E R. Uh, like that, right? That's, that's good, right? I think so. So this one is giving me the E in the correct spot and the R in one of those other spots. This is still very many uh, letters. We actually have even more information than that, though. What, what else do we know that we could try to incorporate? The second one is not R. The second one is not R. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I didn't specifically indicate in here that the second one cannot be R. But uh, yeah, on the, on the general theme of something cannot be something, we know actually there are, for instance, if you look at my other guesses, there's no S anywhere, no T anywhere. So here's another regular expression shortcut. Um, something like this. It's, it's pretty soon my regular expression is going to look totally crazy, and you, you just have to know what every little piece represents. But that, bracket, caret, A, this matches math matches anything except A. All right, or you can do something like bra uh, caret A, B, R, Z. This matches anything except A, B, R, and Z. All right, so you can use that to exclude, rather than the dot, I'm gonna put that kind of a thing. And so I'm gonna change this Instead of this dot here, that letter cannot be uh, any of those things that I already guessed, which is, I'm going to say, it's not a S, T, A, F, I, a D. And it's also not a R, because we know the second position doesn't have a R, like that. So what I'm going to do is replace every dot with that, although I'm not going to include that R in all of them. So are we ready for this? Yeah, so this one, the, the R could be there, and it could be there. All right, so all of these dots I'm going to replace with this. The second one will have the R in it. The others will not. So it's, it looks crazy now. Um, this is what I meant when I said people who use regular expressions every day, they would be able to read that and make sense of it pretty quickly. For me, I would have to look look a bunch of stuff up to figure out what does that mean again but uh, yes we are we are making lots of omissions all right let's see what we get so there's still kind of a lot of choices here but this I think this is as good as we can get in terms of um, narrowing the choices down from this point on right now, if you've already done the Wordle for today, you will see the, um, the answer is in there. Um, I just wanted to try and do a little bit better. I'll tell you what my next guess was when I was doing this. My next guess was uh, cheer, which is in this uh, list. Oh, I, just, I just erased my back scroll. And when I did cheer, it said this. C is in there, E is there, and R is really there, all right? Now my regular expression actually can look quite different. Um, I know the E and the R have to be at the end, so let's just go back to this format. Actually, rather than the exclusions, I'm going to say, first of all, it's basically this, dot, 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 E, R, right? Um, but one of those three dots at the beginning has to be a C. So it's really more like... Oops, sorry. Ah. 
C dot dot er or dot C dot er or dot dot C er, right? Icker. All right, now there's still kind of a lot here, but I haven't excluded all the bad letters. So to exclude all the bad letters, those dots, I now know they can't be all those ones that I guessed, which is all the ones from before plus the H. The H was my only new guess, which is denied. Yeah? The first one, you know that the C is not the first spot. Oh yeah, the C can't be in the first spot. Yeah, thank you. So actually, we don't even need this. Yeah, that's, that's quite a bit less. Yeah, all right, I'm feeling good about this. Um, there's no I also? Oh yeah, so the, when I start doing the exclusions, we're actually gonna get rid of a lot of those. So I'm going to each of the dot, I can say exclude, um, this is not S-T-A-F-I, oops. I'm so used to writing S-T-A-E, uh, F-I-D, and it's not, H or C, right? And it's also Wouldn't it also not be ERI? Could possibly be R, couldn't it? Because I, I never guessed R at the beginning, and it might remember repeated letters are possible, so the fact that R is on the end means it that doesn't mean that it's not on the front. Anyway, something like that. Maybe you could do a little better than that, but all right, I'm gonna put that instead of my dots. There you go, that's the only one. Wow. Yeah, so this is, I guess if I was using this, I would have got it in four. I actually made one more bad guess and then, although, at, like, so what it means is after this point, I should have known that it had to be that word, but I, I didn't know. I, um, so I got, I got it in five today. Anyway, uh, what I'm trying to demonstrate is regular expressions, right? This is kind of complicated, but I would say still easier than trying to write some code without using regular expressions to do what I just did. It's very complicated if you, if you had to actually do it sort of by hand, right? Um, and this maybe will, will sort of make you agree how people sometimes describe regular expressions as its own programming language. If you've never seen regular expressions before, you look at this and it just looks like total nonsense. Um, you have to learn what, what all the little pieces mean. All right, any, uh, any thoughts about that? All right, I wanna do a little bit more of the theoretical side then. I thought that was kind of cute. I hope you enjoyed our time with the real world regular expressions. There are people who use them all the time. Come on, what's happening? off the side. All right. Um, I wanted to just do a few more examples of, you know, back to the land of A's and B's now. Um, a few more examples. This would be like typical homework or, you know, quiz questions. I tell you a set of strings and I say you, um, build a regular expression which matches these types of strings. So how about something like a to the n, b, a. Can you make a regular expression which matches strings of the form a to the n, b, a? Now remember, when I was using the grep, it was always about matching substrings. We're not, we don't do, we're not talking about substrings strings here. Yeah, is that a uh, question or an answer? I have the answer. All right. Uh, a star, b, a. A star, b, a, yeah, great. Any repetitions of A's followed by BA. Excellent. How about this one? I'm, I'm going to do sort of increasing levels of complexity here. How about this? A to the N BA, but N is greater than zero. So that, remember, the star allows it for zero repetitions. How can we make it force um, at least one? Yeah. Yeah. This is like slightly thinking outside the box, but we are forcing them to use at least one A, and then repeating um, some more, possibly zero A's. Even then, expression like A star that is not one. 
Uh, not in this framework, although on in the in the grep there is a um, I believe the the question mark. So if you if you do this dot question mark, I think that that matches. No, no, it's plus. This is what plus is used for yeah, in regular expressions. It's repetitions which have one or more. Yep. The star is repetitions of of zero or more. That's why they don't use plus for or. Uh, great, how about um, A to the N, B, A? This one is still a little more trickier. N is less than two. So that means now we are doing uh, repetitions, but you can only take zero, one, or two of them. Yeah, right, so for this one, you have to use the or. There is not a, actually my answer will not involve a star at all. It's gonna be something here followed by BA. And then you just say, what are the possibilities before the BA? There is empty string or A or um, A squared. So that's what I'm gonna write. Empty string or A or A squared, right? This is one example. I said last time how oftentimes writing things as regular expressions makes it a, a much easier way of writing them than the set theory way. This is actually an example where writing this in set theory is, I would say, simpler than, than this. The regular expressions are not really meant to express things like n less than or equal to 2. OK, how about some more here? Um, I got about five minutes worth here. How about? X in A B star. So all, all of these are going to be in A the alphabet A B. So let's say X such that X has uh, X ends with a B. So it can be anything but with a B at the end. I hear A plus B star B. I like that. Right? A plus B star, you will kind of see this in a lot of examples. When you see A plus B star, the way you read that is anything, right? It's any repetitions of any number of A's and B's in any order that you want. So this has any possible string right there, followed by B. Great. How about, um, this one is just as easy. X starts with A and ends with B A. What's that? That would just be A, A plus B star, B A, all right? Starts with A, followed by whatever, followed by B A. How about X contains B A somewhere? It has a BA somewhere in there. Yeah? A plus B star. A plus B star. Great. BA. A plus B star. I like that. Right? That means any old stuff. It's got to have BA in the middle somewhere and then followed maybe by some other stuff. All right? This is, you know. Uh, something like learning how to write DFAs and NFAs. You gotta, you gotta practice and learn how to write regular expressions. I got a couple more. How about, I got one more. How about X contains exactly three A's, not necessarily consecutive. If you want consecutive, then it's easy. It's just A plus B star, A, A, A. A plus B star, but what about in um, three A's, perhaps not consecutive? Exactly three A's. The way I would think of this is in my regular expression, I would want to see, I would write down those three A's. It's just, they are going to be three A's. They might have some other stuff stuck in between them or something like that. 
Could be dots. What do you think? Could it be like A, B star, A, B star, A? I like that. That's almost perfect. A, B star, A, B star, A. Anything else? A B star thing? Maybe a B star at the end. Anything else? Maybe we start at the beginning. Yeah, this will do it then. All right. This has three A's and then a bunch of B's all over the place. All right. But it has exactly three A's plus some other B's. All right. I think that'll do it for today. Have a great weekend.